Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on derivatives, so specifically today we're talking about optimization. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Question of the day, what is optimization? And the answer is typically we're trying to find the minimum or maximum of a given situation. So we're trying to optimize space, we're trying to optimize volume, all these different things. Or price, that's a big one. So let's go ahead and just dive into example. Here we have a rancher has 400 feet of fence to construct a rectangular corral. One side of the corral will be formed by a barn and requires no fencing. Three exterior fences and two interior fences partition the corral into three rectangular regions. What are the dimensions of the corral that will maximize the enclosed area? And what is the area of this corral? So this problem did provide us with a picture. And as we can see, we have the barn forming one side and then the following sides all labeled as X and Y. Typically in optimization problems, we always want to try to draw a picture to understand the problem. In cases where we're given a picture, that just skips that step for us, which is really nice. But our next step will be to write out the constraint. So the constraint is something that we are stuck with that cannot change. So in our case, our constraint is going to be right here that we have 400 feet of fencing. So because we have 400 feet of, feet of fencing, that means our perimeter cannot exceed 400 feet. So here we can write out perimeter here. This is going to give us four X's because we can see we have four interior fences and then plus that y on the outside, this has to equal 400. So this is our constraint. Typically we work with two separate variables and we wanna go ahead and solve for one of those variables. So in our case, I'm gonna go ahead and solve for y because it's all by itself. So I'm gonna subtract over that 4x and I get y is equal to 400 minus 4x. So now we have what y is equal to. So now we want to go ahead and write out the objective function, and this is typically what we're trying to optimize. So if we look back at the original problem, we want to go ahead and find the dimensions of the corral that will maximize the enclosed area. So we're working with area, and I know that area is equal to x times y. So notice here again our area is in two different variables, but that's why we solve for a variable. I'm going to take what y is equal to and plug it in right here. So if I do that, I get area is equal to x times, and that becomes 400 minus 4x. Let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit. I'm going to distribute that x to both parts, and I get 400x minus 4x squared. We want to go ahead and isolate one variable, so that way we can take the derivative of it, and we don't have to mess with like implicit differentiation and all that stuff. So our next step is to go ahead and apply the first derivative test. So that means I want to go ahead and go ahead and find the first derivative of the area. And if I take that in terms of x, I get 400 minus 8x. Now let's go ahead and set this equal to 0 and solve for any critical values. So if I add over that 8x, I get 400 is equal to 8x. Dividing both sides by 8, I get 50 is equal to x. So we have one critical point. So now let's go ahead and draw out our number line. So with our number line, we can be a bit more careful with it because we are never going to go negative. We're going to stop at zero. We can't have negative fencing. So let's go ahead and draw in our critical point. So remember, we're going to plug values into our first derivative to tell us if our area function is increasing or decreasing. So let's go ahead and find test values. I'm actually just going to plug in a value of zero because we can still include it in our interval. And then let's plug in a value of 51. So in our first interval, when I plugged in 0, I got a positive value, which tells me my function is increasing. And then when I plugged in 51, I got a negative value, which tells me my function is decreasing. So as we can see, we have a relative maximum at 50. And actually, we can argue that this is the absolute maximum because it's the only local extrema, and we have it go something like this. So there's no other places where we can have a maximum. So here we have it is optimized at 50. But we have an alternative way to do this step where we first we have to find the critical value. So we find a prime and we also have that x is equal to 50. So that first part stays the same. But actually what we do is the second derivative test. So let's go ahead and find the second derivative. If we take the derivative of 400 minus 8x, I get a negative 8 value, which actually tells me that our function is going to be concave down on the entire interval. Since it's concave down, boom, that tells us that we have an absolute maximum. So you can do it with either test. So you can do it with the first test or the second test. It's just whatever you prefer. So now our last step, of course, is to answer the actual question that the problem is asking. 
So we're trying to find, if we go back to it, the dimensions of the corral that maximize the enclosed area. And don't forget the second part of the question here, what is the area of the corral? So let's go ahead and answer this first one. We already found that x is equal to 50, but now we need to find our corresponding y value. And if we remember, we had solved for y originally, and this was equal to 400 minus 4x. So let's go ahead and plug in our x value. Here we get 400 minus 4 times 50. This is equal to 400 minus 200, and we get that y is equal to value 200. 50 and 200. Now let's go ahead and answer that second part of the question. So we need to find the area, which is equal to x times y. So this is going to be 50 times 200. This gives us a value of what? 10,000. And so the area is, and there we have it. That's our solution. So like I said earlier, what we're trying to do with optimization problems is use calculus in order to find how we can best optimize something. Sometimes it's the absolute maximum area that we can make, or sometimes it's like the minimum cost of a function because we want to minimize how much we're spending. So let's go ahead and see another example of this. Here we have suppose an airline policy states that all baggage must be a box shaped with a sum of length, width, and height not exceeding 64 inches. What are the dimensions and volume of a square based box with the greatest volume under these conditions? So this one also came with a drawing already, so we don't need to worry about drawing it. This is a square based box, which means the width and the length are the same. So I just have them lab labeled here as width and width, and then we also have the height. So let's go ahead and talk about our objective function. What are we trying to optimize? Here we can see we're trying to find the dimensions and volume of a square base box with the greatest volume under these conditions. So we are talking about volume. Let's go ahead and write that out. We know that volume is equal to all of the lengths multiplied by each other. So this would be w times w times h, or we can rewrite that as w squared times h. Now let's go ahead and talk about our constraint. What are we constrained to? And it's this that the sum of the length, width, and height cannot exceed 64 inches. And so that tells us the sum, which this would be w plus w plus height, has to be 64 inches or less. So I'll write that as 2w plus height equals 64. So I have two variables here. I do not want to take the derivative of two variables because then we get into implicit differentiation. No one likes that. So let's go ahead and try to avoid it. I'm going to go ahead and solve for h right here in order to get h all by itself. So I get h is equal to 64 minus 2w. Now I'm going to use this h value and plug it into the volume. So that way everything is going to be in terms of width. Now let's go ahead and simplify that out a little bit. I'm going to distribute that w squared. So I get 64w squared minus 2w cubed. So now we can go ahead and take the derivative of this. So I say v prime is equal to, and that becomes 128w minus 6w squared. So now what we want to do is we want to set this equal to 0 and solve for any critical values. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got two different solutions here, and let's talk about if they make sense. So if the width were to equal 0, then we would have no volume at all. And so this one makes no sense. And so we're going to stick with the 64 over 3 because that's an actual number. So what we can do for our next step is we can either talk about the first derivative test. We can set up the interval, see where it's increasing and decreasing because we want this to be an absolute maximum. Or we can use the second derivative test, which I'm going to use. I think that one's really nice. So let's go ahead and take the second derivative. So now what we want to do is see if this is positive or negative at our critical value because that tells us if it's concave up or down. So let's go ahead and plug in 64 divided by 3. So here I got a negative value which tells me I'm going to be concave down. So we can see that this dimension maximizes out this volume. And sometimes your professor wants you to write that out, sometimes they don't, it just depends on your professor. Let's go ahead and answer the actual questions. So we want to know the dimensions and we want to know the volume. So we need to go ahead and find the corresponding height. And we're going to do that by plugging it back into our constraint function right here. So if I have height is equal to 64 minus 2 times width, I can plug in our width of 64 divided by 3. So here I got a height of 64 over 3. And so let's go ahead and write this out. So 
So notice here for the volume, I did not multiply it out. I just left it as 64 over 3 cubed. I think that's totally fine. Again, it depends on your professor. I think if you're taking an exam, you would not be expected to multiply that out. So that is all I have for us today on optimization problems. I'll have another part coming out soon and we'll look at more complex problems. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist. They're linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other topics and problems you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.